this great city, the city with great food culture. And if you are trying to do, uh, always bring someone along because a Greek philosopher, Epicurus, once said that we should look for someone to eat and drink with before we start looking for something to eat or drink because eating alone is living a life of a lion or a wolf. So, commensality or the practice or the act of eating together has span across uh, cultures and time. When we eat together, we uh, somehow strengthen our bonding, we have more face-to-face -face interactions, and it also nourishes what we are eating, so we feel really good about it. But if you see today, we are eating together all right, but we are eating within our own bubbles. Uh, it's very rare that we facially interact with the co-diner. Uh, we are more engaged with our own digital space. Now this increasingly has been shown to have significant impact on our physical and mental health well-being. For example, it's shown that if we don't pay much attention to what food we are eating, we tend to eat more unhealthy food. Or we eat something, but we don't really know how much we should eat and why one should be eating. So what's the solution for this? So we can either ban technologies, we don't allow technologies to uh, venture into a uh, meal time, but we could do something different. This is what uh, IKEA in Taiwan did. So it's a small video. Sound. Maybe just pause the video. One way to deal with this problem is to follow a collective approach and force people to put off their phone in order to uh, heat or warm their food. But can we do something different? Can we make this technology more celebratory where it is tightly integrated with the dining experience? So could this be a commensality of the future? So before I tell why it could be, I have an activity for all of you. May I ask everyone to please stand? Uh, while having the Kit Kat in your hand. <laughs> yeah, you, you did that one. Um, oh, one. Uh, maybe form up there. And you, you two. Form up there, yeah. What pay, are you doing? Pay nice attention to each other's face. <laughs> so the objective is, while closing your eyes, you have to feed the Kit Kat to the other person. <laughs> And if the other person is playful, he can either open the mouth or close the mouth. At the same time? delightful and fun, right? And it is not something that we are completely alien to. Uh, all of us are being fed by our mothers or our uh, relatives when we are growing up. 
uh, feeding is a sign of strengthening bonding among families, particularly between mother and infant. We also feed to uh, associate ourselves with an empathy, so also feed other animals. Uh, feeding is also done as a way of assisting someone who needs help, for example, elderly or who has physical disabilities. But so far, feeding has not been totally explored in the context of play. How can able persons explore this uh, delightful activity in a fun and delightful manner? So, uh, let me, instead of me talking about how feeding can work with technology, here is a small video. There is an increasing trend in human computer interaction that concerns the intersection between technology and food. However, so far, most of it is focused on the preparation or presentation of food, but not so much on the actual eating process. To explore this, we have created Armadine. Armadine is a social coordinated eating system consisting of wearable robotic arms behaving as our tuna tongue that is controlled by the detective responses of the eating partner in the following way. If the third arm sends the positive facial expressions of the co-diner, it feeds the food to the co-diner. If the third arm senses negative facial expressions of the co-diner, then it feeds the food to the diner. If the third arm does not send a negative facial expression, then it makes a confusing movement in the air, leading the diners to guess its movement. It then makes an unpredictable decision, either feeding to the diner or to the co-diner, allowing them to eat in a playful and social manner. This is the nice thing from just sitting down shoving food in your face. Like, normally we just look at our mobile phones and maybe talk a little bit, but this one was kind of full interaction with the person. I think it's, uh, it's actually simple for like hardy games. And I think it will help to make new friends. We hope that our work inspires new ways of organizing eating processes, ultimately contributing to our understanding of human food interaction. Uh, so given the limited time I have, I'm not going much into details of the design process, but if you are interested, you can read our paper. I rather focus on the uh, laboratory study that we did in order to evaluate uh, how people would find this in a social dining context and what features of this interaction they find intriguing and what features could, refine, uh, could need more refinement. So here I'm focusing on a few key findings. So the way the interaction was structured, it allowed participants to pay and focus more of their attention towards the food that they are eating, as well as the other person's facial or affective responses, which in a way triggered uh, lots of pleasures and social interaction, but also made them more mindful about what they are eating. Sometimes this is also done in the form of social fun. As you can see here on the table, there were a variety of different foods items which were stacked and certain foods was somebody's favorite and certain was not. So the idea here was that when the, because the arm was uh, uh, behaving according to the facial expression, the so people then tried to make a facial expressions to feed the uh, food to the different person. So if it is a favorite food, people try to get that food to feed to themselves, but if it is a food that they don't like, they try to make facial expressions so that the food is being fed to the other person. <laughs> Uh, and as you can see, in terms of the mapping that we did, the smiling meant that the food is fed to the co-diner, but since the interaction was so much fun, people tend to smile a lot, even though they are not getting fed that much. So, <laughs> you know, it was good. <laughs> the unpredictability of the movement, when the robotic arm couldn't able to differentiate between the affective responses, it made a random movement in the air, and then uh, decided on whether to feed the co-diner or yourself. But that, uh, that short span of time actually uh, led lots of enjoyment in terms of how I can make that arm and how to behave so that it comes to me or behave. So people started telling stories, tried to make other person smile more so that the arm moves towards you rather than the other person. Uh, the study participants who participate in the study were not always are of same height, so some, and the interactions always never happened that the, the food was always, uh, the arm always made a movement right close to your mouth. So sometimes participants needed to twist their bodies in order to reach the food, but it was, uh, rather than uh, it feel like a constraint, it was an enjoyable part of the activity. So sorry, so key takeaways. 
uh, let go of control partially. Uh, the key idea of this project was that in the future, if you have more than one arms, how we can interact in a social dining contest. Normally, we think that if the arm is on our body, it should behave and work under our control. But through this project, we tried to delegate this control to the co-diner. So how that uh, interaction could facilitate, so that's something people could think of. Uh, the existing literature on movement-based game tells that movements are good to facilitate embodied play. Eating is also an embodied experience, but the movements are generally not encouraged during eating, but that is something designers can play, uh, take into account in future. Um, when technology is considered normally as a foe in dining, but we as a designers can embrace digital commensality and make uh, technologies our friend. Thank you.